Okay. I've been watching a lot of videos and stuff, and people are making what they call a Venturi pump. And then the next thing is people try it, and they go, well, you know, I'm not getting any suction. But a Venturi pump can actually pack quite a wallop if you have the proper water pressure and design. Now, the issue in many cases is not the 1,100 to 3,000 pumps that people are using. It's either the distance or in most cases from what I've seen, and it is the design. Now, this is how most people make a Venturi pump. You'll see they'll take a, a smaller, they'll try to bring it in. They have the water flowing in one way and out another. You'll notice the suction here is uh, the same size as the main tube. And they're trying to use a smaller tube to create that jet. This is not how a Venturi pump works. Now, what he's doing, you'll see, is he's trying to create a chamber. Now, this is more toward a Venturi pump than what most people will do. Most people will simply take a piece like this. They will run one hose in that's the same diameter as the other, as the other side and make this smaller, thinking that Either in some cases they'll run the water this way or this way. And what they will do to create their jet is they will cut a funnel or whatever. And then they will drop that funnel into their nozzle. And your water flow is running this way. And the water exit is running this way. And your suction is running that way. Then what some of them do is they will reverse this where this nozzle is in here. So the water coming up creates the flow sucks the material from one direction and moves it into a bucket or whatever on the other. Either of these will work. The trouble is it's not working efficiently. No matter what you do with this, what's happening is you're creating a blowback effect. So the water is running through here. Your suction is coming up here. Now what's happening though is your water is creating a turbulence in these areas and creating a loss of pressure. Running the nozzle a little bit further over it does help this, but you're still creating this turbulence and you're losing pressure. Also because of the entrance way is exactly the same as the exit. It's a straight chop off here. You again are losing pressure. What's supposed to happen with this with an actual Venturi pump is, okay, you will notice this is a Venturi pump that's used for a brake line in a car. You'll notice the entrance is much wider then the exit. The water flow chamber coming to this point is the same. When the water hits here, it expands, brings it down, and then is put back down. You'll also notice that this is almost the same diameter. Now, granted, the in, the in and out, if you have, say, a 40 millimeter inflow, this tube should be about one half to one third the intake size for a good vacuum. So this, if, the, if you've got a 40 millimeter water flow, this should be around 20 or 13 point something millimeters.
Yeah, 13.33. Or if you divide it by half would be 20. Now, this means that you're losing most of your pressure because of your design. This gauging here needs to be at about 20 to 21 degrees at an angle. However, your exiting flow is only a 5 to 6 degree angle. So in this case, when this comes in, I've got a 20 degree downslope angle here. You'll notice the longitudinal tube, the tube running horizontal here, sorry, is your vacuum is in here. It's not sitting out in front of it. All right. So because they're putting the incoming vacuum in front of the nozzle, you're losing pressure because this is not a 20 to 21 degree angle intake to the flow pipe. You're losing pressure because it is not when the exhaust comes out here, this will branch back open at a six degree angle to the exhaust port giving you, again, you're losing pressure. This is why they don't work so well. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can go buy yourself one. Yeah, they cost 14, 20 euro to buy a, a three inch plastic Ventura. You could make one. And the way you would do this is you would take your pipe here. I would close this section off. You would then fill the center with a hard acrylic. Now, once that acrylic dries, what I'm going to do is bore me a hole straight through that is one third to one half my actual pipe. Now we have our running tube. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this, take the plug out, and then I am going to drill me a hole coming in here. Now, this hole here is going to be one-third to one half this diameter. So if I've got a 40 millimeter hole, a 40 millimeter pipe, a 20 millimeter hole drilled, this is gonna be no more than 10 millimeters. In most cases, especially here in Germany, the biggest stuff that you're picking up is maybe 20 millimeters. So a 10 millimeter is not that bad. You can open it to a 20, but then you would have to narrow this down. You would have to raise this level up a little bit in order to do that. All right, so now we've got our four sizes. Then there is a, you can buy it, it's for drills, and it sort of looks like a cone. It's got the little drill bit attached to it. Then what I would do is drill 
my two ends. Now, I will probably have to file this back a little bit with a small file to get it to what I want. And you can use a, a half round file for that. But my one end here that I need my 20 degrees, I can actually calculate that off this triangle. Now all I have to do is run my hose over this. My other, I don't even need extra piping, I just need a hose. So now, as my water flows through, it goes from this to a 20 degree angle. On my other side, I would want to do a basic drill point and then file it out to where this comes out at a six degree angle. What's going to happen is this is going to remove any of that turbulence and it's going to cause the suction to come straight across. Then I would put my hoses on and there you have it. It's not as clunky. You're not having to chop and move stuff around, not having to glue. All of this is based specifically on these measurements. You will now notice my entry is larger, my exit is smaller. I've still got this lined up for my water flow. That's your basic water flow zone. So on this end, to reduce my hose, what I would do is I would buy one of these plugs. You see them for most PVC pipe and so on. It's just got a round butt on the end of it. And this may be filled or it may be hollow. And it just plugs right in there. What I would do with this is you gauge your hole, what you want. Then... I am going to, again, I'm going to fill this with epoxy. Bam. Once it's filled, I'm going to drill me a hole the size that I need to firmly fit that tubing in. With me so far. Then I'm going to plug the hole. I'm going to put the plug in. So I've put my, my plug in. It has my hole drilled. At this point, I can then attach my hose over this. When I adjust this hose, what I want to do is I want to do that before I put this on. Because, let's see, because I've drilled through there. We're good on that. Yeah, that's all you have to do. I would put my hoses on. Now your water flow comes through. You've got your 20 degree angle. You've got your five to six degree angle, 20 to 21, five to six. You've got your intake. And because this extends over it, you're going to get a much higher flow. And the way that you increase that is either by lengthening the water conduit tube, this section in here, and or narrowing it. But remember, if you're going to be pulling five, 10 millimeter gold up, you want at least a 10 mil, uh, 12 to 15 millimeter gap in here because you don't want it packing. You don't want it packing up. You want it to have plenty of flow. So if I was pulling, if I'm pulling a 40 millimeter tube, <coughs> I would want to drill that, I'd say about 15, 18 millimeter max, and then run a 10 millimeter vacuum tube into it, my vacuum hose. That, from as I understand the mathematics here, 
And from what I've been reading up and trying to calculate all of this, this will give you a better Ventura pump than trying to chop off uh, drainer funnel nozzles and so on. I hope that this has been of some assistance. And if people do make one of these, let me know how it goes.